Okay, this is piece 48, Catacombs of Pris Priscilla. It is our first um, European Middle Ages Christian art piece. And uh, get ready for some Bible stories. There are three images associated with this, and they have a lot of iconography associated with them. So context for all three of these frescoes, they're, these are all frescoes. Context is the Christians buried their dead in catacombs, like this one in Priscilla, called the Catacomb of Priscilla. It is uh, the belief of the Christians that their body needed to be intact when Jesus came, returned, and they were summoned from the, their, their death, um, and then they would be judged. And if they were good, they'd go to heaven. If they were bad, they'd go to hell. But you kind of need your body for this resurrection bit. Um, six million people were buried in catacombs in the Italian peninsula. 40,000 people were buried here in these catacombs. This is a loculi. It's a, like a shelf. And there's different sizes of shelves, for obviously, for babies, children, um, and adults. People would be wrapped in a shroud, you know, in a white covering placed on the uh, loculi. And then the loculi would be covered over. This would be covered over with a piece of marble or some like uh, clay, brick, and uh, there could be painting over that. This is a bigger sarcophagus space. So if you were wealthy enough to have a sarcophagus, you could be placed in your sarcophagus in this little niche. This is what the land that's above the catacombs of Priscilla. She, Priscilla, was a wealthy Roman woman who started this catacomb for the burial of her family and then over time donated it to the Christians. And it was cheaper for Italians, Christians, to be buried underground where you weren't taxed. This is kind of how cavernous these places are, five miles in length in the catacombs of Priscilla. And this is not the catacomb of Priscilla, but I want you to see the archaeology and how close these bodies are being buried together. Okay, form for our pieces. This is one of our images here. Uh, this is a cubiculum, or yeah, cubiculum is a burial chamber. This is a special burial chamber, perhaps owned by a family, and a sarcophagus could be found in this space right here. Um, it is called the Greek chapel, not because people prayed down here, but only because um, there were there's Greek writing here on the wall. Um, look here, there's a fresco that we're going to learn about. And over here is another fresco we're going to look about, look, learn about. <laughs> On the walls of this cubiculum, the Greek chapel, the painting um, done by the painters created the architecture for the space. This is really common here in this catacomb. Remember, though, we saw this before in the house of Vetti, where the painter drew all of these little borders. Same is true here. The painter actually made it look like this was marble. Pretty cool. We call that Pompeii style because we saw it here at Pompeii in the house of Betty. Okay, so the painting, other than the architectural painting uh, that we see, this fresco, the first one is the Adoration of the Mag Magi. Uh, do you guys put up a um, uh, at Christmas time or in the holidays? Do you put up a um, nativity set? Because if you do, you probably have the three kings or the three magi in your nativity set. They're known for coming to see the baby Jesus. They arrive on January 6th and they bring the gifts, gold, frankincense and myrrh. And here they are featured up here in this fresco. Then further back, let me. we're going to go right back here. This archway above the sarcophagus space is the story of the breaking of the bread fres uh, in a, done in a fresco. And you may know that the story is that Jesus 
uh, fed 5,000 ish people uh, with the miracle of making a few loaves of bread and a few fishes go a long way. Uh, look, looking close up here, we see there are seven dudes at a table. Uh, this is not the Last Supper. They're at a table, and there's this artistic piece of foreshortening where the artist shows us these items at an angle and allows us to see some depth. But on either side of the table are the baskets showing us the loaves. You can see more of them. Seven baskets, seven dudes showing us the loaves and the fishes. Okay, the second image in this piece is called the Orant fresco. And Orant refers to this stance where you're praying with your hands up toward the heaven and you'd be looking up at the heaven too. Vocabulary, this Orant fresco happens to be made in a lunette. Lunette refers to the semicircle. Um, there is, in terms of form, more architecture being painted here. This is a pendentive. When we get to building massive domes on uh, churches and mosques, remember in the Pantheon how the dome sat on a rotunda? Well, here, the dome is going to sit on this structure called a pendentive, this triangle bit. It's going to hold the dome up and get the dome to be even bigger. All right. Let's look closer at this Orant fresco. In this fresco, it's the story of this woman. Here she is getting married. Here she is sitting on a birthing chair and she's nursing her baby. So she is a mother and a wife. But here, as an orant, she is looking up at heaven and her eyes are look or her eyes and her hands are going up, and she's looking toward an afterlife. Um, I want to point out that this bird up here is a peacock, and a peacock, peacock's meat somehow stays. Um, fresher, longer, and so a peacock is an icon for um, immortality. So if this woman's soul goes up to heaven, the idea would be that she can be immortal. In terms of content here, uh, it's kind of like form also. She's got the shadow under her chin. Her face looks really natural, but her hands look ginormous, right? They're not in proportion. Okay, and our last piece right here is another fresco, and you can see the coloring is, is a little more natural looking. Do you see the coloring here doesn't look so natural? And that's because <clears throat> of the lighting. The um, uh, lighting makes changes the color in there. Okay, but this fresco here, it, we've got kind of a natural looking um, fresco, and this is called the Good Shepherd fresco, because in the center of this round all this round space, we have a guy who's standing looking like a shepherd. Oh, and who could that Good Shepherd be? That's Jesus, the big JC. And here's another image of a Good Shepherd fresco. And here, the icon is showing that Jesus Christ is looking after his flock, all of the people. Here's another example of that, where you can see in terms of form that this Good Shepherd guy, I'm going to show you a better image here, right? This one's got a little contraposto going on, but this one doesn't. And he looks more like um, an archaic statue from the Acropolis called the Masha Forest. Okay, last, in terms of content, this story we have a roundel with the good shepherd, and then we have these orants, right? People praying with their hands up to heavens. But these four semicircles or uh, lumens are about the story of Jonah. I know it doesn't look really super clear, but 
this, trust me, the story is Jonah was called upon by God to follow God and to help God. And Jonah said, no, I don't want to do it. So Jonah went and got on a boat. Here he is in a boat and um, a ship. And the people on the ship threw him overboard. We don't know. If, I don't really know if he asked to be thrown overboard or the people threw him overboard. But part of the reason he was thrown overboard was because God had created a storm. He, you know, kind of chased Jonah down when Jonah tried to flee. And so uh, Jonah was thrown overboard. And then Jonah was swallowed up by a whale and or a sea creature. We think it's a whale. And um, Jonah spent three days inside the belly of the whale. And then he was reborn. Here he is either coming out or going into the whale. I think this might be him with the whale right here. Uh, So probably here, this is him coming out of the whale. And after three days, he is reborn. He sees the light and he's going to follow God. Okay, so the function of these three images is that they have, uh, they tell us Bible stories. And one of them is about Jesus the shepherd. Uh, Orants, the whole praying, loaves and fishes over here, the three magi, and then the story of Jonah. And so they t- keep the Christian Bible stories alive for the Christians while they are living in the Roman Empire that doesn't accept Christianity right away. <laughs>